After just one sip of porridge, the nun is foaming at the mouth, bleeding from her ears and nose, and dies of poison in less than a minute. The rest of the nuns stand up to protect and guard. Queen. Mary leaving the convent in a hurry. Mary Stuart, the beheaded Queen of Scotland, has been in danger since she was six months old when she became Queen, so she's been hiding in a convent since she was nine years old. How could she have survived to the age of 15? If she hadn't had a taster who tested for poison before every meal she ate. But now that someone dares to put poison in the convent, it means that the convent is no longer safe, and she has to find a new shelter. So Mary, with her ladies-in-waiting at her side, set off for the French court in a carriage. At the age of five, Queen Mary was betrothed to Francis, the future king of France, by their parents. She would offer France a huge dowry and armies, and in return, France would send its best soldiers to help Scotland and defend it against England's invasion. After a long journey, Mary finally arrives at the castle of France, where her ally lives. She was expecting her fiancé, but she didn't know it was the beginning of a new crisis. After several years of separation, the engaged couple Francis and Mary meet again with a lot of awkwardness, one of them looking at her fiancé with adoration, the other so indifferent that he even shows up late to greet his fiancé. She will cost Francis his life. Yet this reputed Sears vision of foresight provokes Catherine de' Medici's killing intent for Mary. On the other hand, Mary, unaware of the danger she was in, returned to her place and started dressing up. She had visions of falling in love with her fiancé and having a sweet marriage. Francis, however, had a woman on the side and was making out with his first love. So when Mary knocks on his door, all she gets is a rolling knife from her fiancé and he rudely sends her out. The sulky girl's ruined mood was restored when she went to the creek to pick up the smooth, pretty little stones. Queen Mary and her ladies-in-waiting hid behind a window to spy on the princess making love to her newlywed husband. The princess of France was first undressed by her ladies-in-waiting in the presence of priests. Then she was dressed in a plain white nightgown. When her husband arrives, she falls into bed with him. Outside the window, Mary watched this passionate scene, her heart rippling with emotion. She didn't regain her senses for a long time and lay in bed that night, sleepless. When she finally fell asleep, a dark shadow crept into her bed and was about to do something bad to her. Mary suddenly woke up with white eyes and screamed to summon the guards. Mary remained curled up and shivering until the man who was about to do the dirty deed was taken away. When Mary regained her senses, she realized what was going on. The man's purpose must be to break her engagement. If her chastity was destroyed, she would lose her marriage to France and her asylum. So Mary went to King Hemi of France to find out who was behind it. But she is told that the suspect has already been executed and that England is secretly working against her to destroy the union between Scotland and France. Mary feels powerless and the nightmares are always there. Francis doesn't understand her either. Not only does he not want to marry her, but he comes to teach her in a condescending manner. You said that you had a country to think about. Were you thinking about Scotland during any of this? I was this? thinking about myself, my friends, my safety. Mary is charming when she argues her case, and Francis grows to appreciate her charms. But when he was about to kiss her, Francis flinched and ran away. Mary looked at his back and her passionate heart felt cold. She remembered what a mysterious person had told her last night. It was someone high up in the French court who had instructed the man to assault her. So Mary must find out who is really behind this before she marry Francis. Soon, a new crisis and challenge arises. An envoy from England arrived in France. England had wanted Mary's land and throne for years. And they met with Mary with the confidence that they would win. France's commitment to Scotland is hollow. They're playing both sides. If you were threatened, would they really come to your defense? Mary heard the intimidation in his words. She just didn't think the English ambassador would have the audacity to attack her in the French court. Exhausted from the treacherous royal banquet, Mary returns to her chambers. As soon as she opened the door, she saw a strange woman wearing her evening gown in front of the full-length mirror. Just as Mary is about to question her about her audacity, the maid wriggles and collapses on the floor, wailing in agony about the poison in her dress. Mary panicked and ran out of the room to get help. But when she led Francis back into the room, the maid had suddenly disappeared from the floor. Mary remembered the threat from the English envoy and immediately told him the whole story. Francis, hearing of this, went to his father Henry and asked him to use the king's authority to arrest the English envoy. The king of France, however, is indifferent to Mary's plight. She's not just an alliance. She's a girl under your care. But that's of no matter to you, is it? I'm intrigued by how much she matters to you. Francis felt sorry for Mary and wanted to help her in any way he could. But without power, the two of them can move forward without support. Sympathy is the beginning of love. Francis is in love with Mary, but he doesn't know it yet. Mary doesn't want to sit still, so she goes to the secret passage to ask for help from the mysterious person. The mysterious person still didn't show up, but left a key on the floor. 
Mary took the key and searched for the door it unlocked. When she opened the room of the English envoy with the key, she saw the maid who was poisoned in her clothes that day. Apparently, it was the work of the English ambassador Simon, but Simon didn't show any fear and told the truth. He was authorized by the Queen of France, Catherine de Medici, because it was her order to get rid of Mary. Queen Mary was distraught to know who wanted her dead, but she had no proof that it was Catherine who had done the murderous deeds. Francis, when he heard her conclusions, he found them absurd, but his heart was shaken by this grieving woman. So he went to question his mother, Catherine, late at night. From her stunned reaction, Francis knew the truth, that it was his mother who wanted Mary dead. The next day, he approached Mary with a guilty conscience and said that he would stand with her as a friend against her enemies, both known and unknown. But he still didn't say he wanted to marry her, and he didn't dare say what was in his heart. It wasn't until the man came along that Francis faced himself and admitted that he was in love with Mary. Mary and Francis look at each other in the midst of the fluttering goose feathers, and there's no room in their eyes for anything else in the world. As the unmarried couple drew closer together and prepared to dance, Prince Tomas of Portugal swooped in and stole his chance to be Queen Mary's partner. With one arm wrapped around her waist and the other interlocked with her fingers, he danced with her, watching the two of them twirling and jumping in close proximity to each other. Francis felt completely jealous of him, as if his heart was being torn by a million ants. But he could not have imagined that something even more exciting would follow. After the agonizing ball, Mary followed Tomas on horseback and rode away to a small, isolated house. Prince Tomas of Portugal opened a chest and revealed many dazzling jewels. Then he pulled a ring out of the chest and got down on one knee in front of Queen Mary. With me, and I will make you wait. Say yes, and you'll have your man. His words were now too tempting for Mary, whose country was now in danger because a few days earlier, the English army had pushed its way to the Scottish border. Mary approached King Henry of France and asked him to send troops to Scotland, even if he only needed six companies to deter England. But her future father-in-law excuses himself and refuses to send troops to Scotland anyway. To save Scotland and her people, Mary's mind was changed. France won't help us, and I will have no choice but to accept Portugal's offer. Francis, who had just realized he was falling for Mary, was anxious to hear this. He ran to plead with his father to send troops to Scotland's aid. When he realizes that his father is unwilling to send troops to help Scotland, Francis pesters him with a sword fight and promises that if he loses the fight, he will never ask for troops to help Scotland again, or he will ask his father to send troops to help them. Henry starts the match with him as if he were a little boy. But when he lost the fight, he was a scoundrel and said it was the proper way for a king to behave. The king makes promises to everyone, and if it ends up being good for the kingdom, then the king keeps his word, and if it doesn't, then he doesn't. With his fiancée on the verge of running off with the Portuguese, Francis had to resort to a desperate measure. He interrupts his father in the middle of the night to make out with another woman and threatens his father with his overbearing mother. If his father doesn't send troops to help Scotland, he will tell his mother that the king has another mistress. Henry, sighing that he had learned how to be a king, agreed to send troops to help Scotland. The only problem now is that the French army is near the English Channel, so they need their best horsemen to carry the message that they're reinforcing Scotland. So Francis' half-brother, Sebastian set off to support Scotland with his army. Once everything was settled, Francis went to Mary to claim credit. Mary, it's done. Six companies are on their way to Scotland tonight. I still can't offer to marry you right away, like Tomas. We can only hope someday it will be right for our countries. Mary smiled for the first time after so many days of sadness at the news. She was more attracted to her fiancé, to whom she had been betrothed since childhood, and to Tomas, whom she didn't know at all. But the outcome was not to be. Sebastian's party was betrayed by spies and ambushed by England. Six companies of French soldiers are killed, and even Sebastian is seriously wounded and his life is uncertain. King Henry blamed Francis for the irreversible consequences of his sentimentalism. After such a blow to his first administration, Francis retreated again. He felt he was too weak to give Mary the happiness she wanted, and since he couldn't protect her, he gave her up to another man. In order to save her country and her people, Mary finds Tomas, who is willing to send Portuguese soldiers to reinforce Scotland, and agrees to marry him. After winning the beauty, Tomas seems to be a different person, and starts to make all kinds of provocations to Francis. Tomas not only wanted to go one-on-one -on -one with Francis in the archery competition, but also gave roses to Francis, fiancé, Mary, in front of the public, which severely humiliated Francis. Although Mary accepts the roses in a state of despair, her heart has already been given to Francis. Soon it was time for Mary to leave for Portugal, and Mary met Francis alone to say goodbye in the grove by the lake. But their kiss was seen by Tomas, and he revealed his true cruelty. You seem to believe that until you're married to me, you're somehow free. 
If so, you're mistaken. After he finished speaking, he slapped his servant hard and announced that he was the whipping boy to be punished in Mary's place. Whenever Mary questioned his decision or interrupted him, her whipping boy would be punished. Mary was so intimidated by his severity that she gave in. Luckily, Francis found the evidence to prove that Tomas was a spy who betrayed the news of the French army to England. Tomas' death meant that Mary, who was going to Portugal to get married, had once again managed to stay in France. After all this, Francis, not wanting to be a coward anymore, revealed his heart to Mary. You know what my heart says now? It says that I should forget about politics and be with you. Will this unmarried couple, who are so in love with each other, be able to fulfill their destiny?